Okay, today we're going to uh, work on a DSP tutorial to do with a chirp signal, uh, FFT and STFT. Okay. Uh, in music audio processing, normally people refer chirp signal as uh, moving frequency signals. We artificially created using algorithm. So here in this page, they're showing a, a typical DAW create a chirp signal. Uh, this is uh, um, Audacity digital audio workstation. Most of the uh, audio software be able to generate chirp with user specifications. For example, this screen shows we can create chirp signal, start 200 hertz, end up 1000 hertz, amplitude uh, 0.8 with uh, five seconds long, something like that. So. Um, it is very useful because previously we've been able to generate a sine wave, cosine wave, synthesize uh, um, a different uh, type of uh, 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 sinusoid waveform, adding them together, mix them together. However, in many cases, chirp signal is very useful because it can be act as very useful test signal because you want to test a range of uh, uh, frequency, how your device or your algorithm works. Um, so we will say in this lab, how we're going to use chirp signal to uh, test some in, in important DSP concepts. So uh, the way to generate a chirp signal is quite uh, um, um, a simple, but also uh, complicated in the way uh, we describe the signal in the mathematical uh, formula. Um, MATLAB has already had a built-in chirp signal generator, but we will uh, try to write our own. That's why we uh, later we call our chirp signal called MyChirp, function called MyChirp. Pre in previous session, we'd be able to generate a sine wave, yeah, sine wave or cosine wave, uh, basically just a steady frequency. So let's just a quick review and say how that uh, can be modified to generate a chirp signal, all right? So first of all, uh, we, I have this section of code here. So you, you, you know, in any case you have, uh, need, you need to create some basic parameters. Uh, start with sampling frequency, FS, here is 10K, and amplitude, A equal to 0 0.8. Sampling period, Ts equal to one divided by sampling frequency, basically means uh, the time between two samples. Duration, 1.5 second. Time, basically generate a simulated uh, a time slot from zero increment every sampling period and up with duration. And the sound you want to, uh, the, the frequency of the sound you want to create, F equal to 200. Then in the line nine, which is basically a formula of sine wave, it has a signal equal to A amplitude multiplied by sine two pi ft, this form, it has this form. So what basically it does here is you are creating a, a angle with you know sine sine function basically take any kind of uh, angle and calculate the value of that angle, isn't it? So you can, uh, for example, sine ninety degree or sine uh, quarter of pi. The the angle can be into different uh, unit uh, or radians or degree. Here we're using radians. So when the degree is moving, the sine will generate uh, a value between one minus one and one. So when this angle moving at a steady speed, then we generate a constant frequency. So in this case, we create a steady speed at uh, 200 hertz. Okay, that's basically how the 200 hertz works. So I'm going to play the sound. Hopefully it's not too loud and you can pick up the sound. All right, can you hear my uh, sound? 200 hertz? Great, okay. So, uh, well, this is everybody know already, you know, we did this already. The key thing is we understand why it is a steady speed because mathematically we create 
a linear function of time. So 2 pi is constant, f here is also constant. Basically, we say sine something kt, all right? So sine something multiplied by t, and that something is constant. That constant is constant speed. So translate to sound, then it is a fixed frequency. So for chirp signal, here yeah, I've got some demo code for chirp signal. So we can generate something, the frequency is moving, is moving, okay? So here we got some code to generate chirp signal, and then we can try that one. Okay, so let's first try the chirp signal first, and then we talk about uh, what happens here. Here actually we generate a chirp signal start from 200 hertz, end up with 1,700 hertz, okay. All right, so we do, uh, we have some problem here. Okay, that's fine. This is because this variable has changed the variable because the chirp is building a variable for MATLAB. So I have to ch change to chirp one. So don't use chirp as it is as keyword in MATLAB now because MATLAB has a chirp building function now. Okay, so in this case, and I'm run this again, should get rid of error and uh, with the sound. Because we know for sine wave, we generate a linear function of the time. So then the coefficient of that linear function, kt, the, the factor of that linear function will be the speed, okay? So with now we're going to generate a, a varying speed of time. Uh, basically, the easiest way to do that is to generate a, a second order function of the time. So that's what we did in this line. Okay, so that's basically and uh, 918 and 919. Uh, I'm going to talk about this uh, later in the in the in the next uh, demo session at 12 more details. The I'm I'm not sure your uh, mathematical background about uh, uh, di uh, differentiate and uh, derivatives. Okay, so um, my experience of my previous. Uh, uh, students are uh, some some had those some hasn't studied that but it's okay we're not focused on the mass uh, of that but again it it will help us to understand so if i give you analogy what we're trying to generate here is some sort of uh, uh, if you're driving the car at uh, 40 mile per hour then you generate a speed of 40 so that's a fixed frequency corresponding that into a fixed frequency, uh, a fixed uh, sound frequency. So the chirp signal is like your acceleration or you decelerate, all right? So what you're trying to do is your distance moving over the time are not averaged at a certain constant value. You are ch constantly changing your value. So the rate of changing basically is how you're uh, changing the speed. For example, you are uh, changing at uh, uh, increase three miles per hour. So you basically, is, then your frequency is always changing from start to end point and the average speed at different time are different. So in that case, um, the distance is almost like uh, the uh, sinusoid angle here. So we actually using a theta, which is a represent a uh, Greek symbol theta. So the actual angle we feed into a sinusoid waveform theta now is no longer a linear function of time, but we construct a general form of second order function, a second order uh, function of time. Okay, so in, in that general form, we basically say theta equal to a t squared plus b t plus c. So we translate that into a MATLAB code. So it looks like this, theta equal to two pi. We're adding two pi because we need to take angular frequency. Uh, multiply by uh, a coefficient here, ABC has been um, defined in this demo as 500, 200, and 100. So basically 500 corresponding to the coefficient A. A T squared, now you can say, the time is going to be squared. So t dot multiplied by t, that means t squared, which is a variable. Uh, t represents a variable, although it is not, strictly speaking, a variable. It's simulated time, but it's varied from zero. 
to end of duration. And then you have a linear function of t as well here. So this is the first order coefficient, which is 200. So in that case, the theta is basically an angle moving at a, a second order of time, acceleration. So you feed that theta angle into sine wave, you generate a chirp signal. And the next piece, we generate signal backwards. All right, so basically say this is a backwards signal generator. This is a, a going up and the next one is going down. Okay, so um, we'd be able to generate a, a signal, but in this way, we are not so sure what is a star frequency. I'm, I certainly, I tell you, uh, uh, I basically write the star and the frequency, but from the coefficient, it's very hard to tell what is a star frequency, what is end frequency. Uh, from rule of the sump, you're probably aware the coefficient, all right, um, of the f of the first order of t is normally a start frequency. You can see 200 here, so we start 200, 1,700 1, multiplied by t. So this second sound actually starting uh, that end of the frequency is sort of hidden in this algorithm. It's not very user friendly for end user. What end user want is say I define star frequency and frequency. The algorithm is going to work out for me. All right. So audio engineers or DSP engineer need to design this for audio engineer. Okay. So we create this moving angle as second of the time with coefficient A, B, and C. So corresponding to this code. So the C is 100, the C is 100, and the B is seven, uh, 1,700 in this case, and uh, A in this case minus 500. So it's, Olivia, you're right. So that's what happens. Okay, so you can define whatever number you want, put it into A, B, C, and then you will have different chirp signal. So in next uh, uh, talk, I'm going to talk about how this, uh, linked and how can we convert into a nice user controlled interface because user wouldn't want to go to the mass user all user want is like this uh, um, DAW interface yeah as audacity so you can just simply say I want start and frequency and duration so how to look at any different sound signal using uh, Fourier transform okay we have learned uh, a bit about uh, fast Fourier transform, and now we can use this tool to actually um, look at the Fourier transform of this chirp signal. So here we got, I've got a bit of a code. With this code is to plot FFT of chirp signal. Fourier transform, a discrete Fourier transform of chirp signal. You have this uh, kind of a block of energy range from certain frequency to certain frequency. All right, so we create about 200 to 1,700. Uh, so, so that's a block of energy here. Okay, so, but there is problem. There is problem of this representation. Okay, so if you don't want to use code, the code will automatically run. If you change the code here, you will be able to display the different uh, um, signals uh, FFT. So you're just changing this to the chirp one into whatever the name of the signal you want, it will display it. So for people who want to use an um, interactive tool, you can always, always use a SP2 to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly use SP2 to import these two signal. Okay, so we click File Import, and then we have look what is the problem. File, Import, so I'm going to have a Chirp one, chirp one, go into the data section and uh, let's put a frequency there. So we have FS going to the frequency, we call it signal one, leave it as it is. So let's view the signal in SP2. Okay, we got chirp signal here. Certainly because you can see that it's basically, uh, and you can play that as well. So from low frequency to high frequency. And then we do another one. So this signal is chirp two. 
right? That's correct. Okay, so these are two totally different chirp signal, certainly, because it's one is from frequency upwards, another one has frequency downwards. Okay, so then we can look at the spectrum of that. So by highlight uh, one of the signal and click create a spectrum, and then you can say, I want to use FFT. And the way I'm going to create the spectrum is using all the number of samples, all number of samples of the signal, which is about 15,001. So I type 15,001 here and uh, click apply. Okay, that generate. This is exactly as same as what I did in the coding, all right, the function, uh, the spectrum. Then I'm going to do the one for the second signal. Second signal, create, doing the FFT, and then I put that number as well, one. Okay, and create, okay. So now I can see the problem. Okay, so the problem is, if I look at this is second spectrum, if I'm going to switch to first spectrum, and second spectrum, the, the FFT of the chirp signal is exactly the same. Although the sound is different, but because uh, this chirp signal, they all play sound, play frequency, uh, between range between 200 and 1700 hertz. So the energy of FFT just is showing a, a block of the energy within that range. So the problem here is the pure FFT algorithm is lacking of a critical information, which is timing changing frequency. So FFT alone cannot represent enough information for musician or sound engineer to analyze. That's why we're going to introduce a concept called short time Fourier transform. That is what people need. And it's very useful. Loads of advanced algorithms use that. So what we're trying to do here is um, how can we uh, get a, a, a nice representation of this uh, chirp signal in terms of uh, both time and frequency uh, energy. A bit more about a chirp signal before I go into that step. Okay, so uh, here is the, the first page is to do with uh, mathematical uh, background of uh, how we calculate instantaneous frequency. So by taking the first derivative of the angle function against the time. So we can say omega equals to this uh, prime, like single quote is mean, mean, it means uh, first derivative if people study uh, differentiate. So then that's equals to the, the generic function where it becomes to, uh, to the derivative of this whole generic function will become 280 plus B plus C. So actually the coefficient C is become zero when we calculate frequency. So this coefficient is zero and then the coefficient of the, then the second order uh, expression of the theta will become the first order. Uh, so the frequency is become the first order function of time. So the frequency is changing over the time. Okay, basically I'm come back to that later. So what we have done here is we create FFT of both signal and reverse the chirp signal, but it all looks same. So what we trying to do, they all looks like this picture, which is not helpful. So what we're trying to here is introduce a wonderful tool called short time Fourier transform. So short time Fourier transform, basically what it does is they split the chirp signal into small part of the window. Okay, so in MATLAB, we have a, a, a spectrum gram, spectrum gram. This is a building function to generate short time Fourier transform. So it basically does uh, FFT window by window. Okay, so each window is about a certain millisecond long. So then you can actually get the frequency estimation over the time. So here it, uh, is a default diagram of a chirp signal uh, generated in a spectrum gram. 
So I just quickly explain that. So uh, if you go to a MATLAB spectrum gram and you can open the help file of the spectrum gram, uh, so we can basically see. All right, so you can open a, a, a help file of spectrum gram. Spectrum gram is very uh, sophisticated, powerful. Uh, so it takes different form of the inputs input. Okay, so I use one of the form input like this X window overlap FFS So I'll explain that what happens here. So so I use this form Which you takes first the parameter is your signal for example chirp chirp one chirp two window is how uh, Many numbers you're going to chop in terms of uh, you know you split the signal into small windows overlap means you are do you overlap the first window and the second window uh, what i mean is for example if you want to analyze signal 10 sample by 10 sample so take first 10 sample calculate frequency take sec next 10 sample so you can take sample from 1 to 10 then 11 to 20 then 21 to 30 and so on or you can take uh, from one to 10, then five to 15, then 10 to 20. So you have overlap window. So this is why overlap window happens. Then followed by the number of FFT. So normally I suggest to use exactly number as window. So window size, for example, is all in a uh, number of samples, okay? So the window size, if it's 128, so I just put number FFT 128. So um, you give, you basically say all those samples go into the FFT analysis. And finally, your sampling frequency. Okay, so that is you going to do uh, in your tutorial now. So, you know, basically generate chirp signal using FFT analyze and also create STFT. So I got a question about the overlap from Jacob. So overlap, why the overlap? So if I got a piece of a uh, uh, sine wave, yeah, so you can see the, the, my join, yeah, hopefully. And then I said, I want to window this piece of signal, I'm going to uh, split that into window. Okay, split a window. So if I, this is the first window, for example, then this is second window, then this is third window. That means there's no overlap because the second window has no overlap. It start with the sample, you know, the last sample of the first, uh, you know, the last but next from first window go on. And the size here is 128. If that is case, then this is not what he says here. This is 120. So what, what this tells us, is we create a window like that. So we have first 128 windows, then we start probably about the eighth sample. So the second window is here, and the third window is here, the fourth window is here. So this is second window, this, this is third window. And you have sort of overlap here, overlap here, overlapping about 128 oh sorry 120 so this is 120 basically stand for okay so uh, uh sorry about this join user mouse can you see you understand what's overlapping mean yeah okay why yeah the problem is why why we have that okay so when you're doing fft you have a problem of this artifacts. So you basically suddenly stop the sample, which basically is continuous. So your frequency estimation of the sample around the edge is not so good. All right, so sometimes in some situation you want to smooth. So when you're sliding the window, rather than, you know, uh, just uh, there's no overlap, then you always have bad estimation on the edge. So if you do a sliding window, you always have the samples will be in the middle, sort of in the middle section. So you have less 
artifacts. All right, but, but in, in some uh, very dedicated analysis, probably you need, but in, in our demo, it's not really a matter. So, so it's not a big problem. All right, so hopefully you can see my screen. Yeah, if you have any problem, just uh, type any uh, message in the chat box. Last talk, I was talking about, uh, um, I, w I went through different uh, type of uh, chirp signal, uh, going up, going down, and revealed the problem of FFT, which we cannot uh, showing uh, timing changing frequency. So what we're trying to do here is to, first of all, to solve the problem. Every time you want to create a chirp signal, you construct this second order function, which is not very helpful uh, because um, for end user, for example, you are programming a DSP algorithm for audio engineer, they wouldn't know or they wouldn't care about the internal algorithm. All they need to know is the start and the frequency and the duration. You, as a DSP engineer, need to produce the result for them. So let's have a look a bit more detail about how that works, how that works. <clears throat> So it will give you better uh, algorithm in terms of if we know uh, the mathematical formula behind that. So here I construct a code called a chirp signal refined, chirp signal refined code. This piece of code also can be downloaded from Moodle side. Right, you can have a look at this later. Okay, so uh, in the comments part, I was basically did this uh, mathematical derivation, uh, how to convert user input into the algorithm, which put uh, output the what the user desired. So first of all, let's define a couple of parameters. Let's define a couple of parameters. So uh, F1, capital F1, indicate start frequency. All right, so this line is what end user going to input. F2, capital F2, representing end frequency. Duration, representing the duration of the sound. All right, so that's what anybody can, you know, specify. I want F1, blah, blah, F2, blah, blah, and duration. So then the algorithm is what, we, is what I uh, trying to do here, is basically say, because we have this theta, which is a moving angle, is a second order function we uh, describe <clears throat> second order function of time we describe this function using a standard general coefficient such as a multiplied by t to the square plus bt plus c here here a b c are all coefficients so we want to decide what the relationship between user input parameter, which everybody would understand, to the coefficient, mathematical coefficient. So this relationship is the DSP algorithm, okay? So we use the input of those, then we create theta, then we play sign theta, the chirp is accomplished. So that's what we need to do. When we do this, then we need to involve a little bit of mass here. So uh, the mass tells us, so the math tells us to be able to find the, um, the frequency or the speed at any point, we can take a derivative of this second order function. Hence, the theta is going to be, sorry, not this page, theta, okay. So the frequency omega is going to be equal to 2at plus b plus zero. So the coefficient has been reduced into just the two, A and B. C is basically constant. It doesn't affect the frequency at all. So it's gets eliminated as zero. So we have established the relationship between the frequency omega, angular frequency, divided by two pi is the frequency, and the coefficients of this uh, time, and A and B. So then we put this back to MATLAB. So say, now we get the result would be the function of time, which basically is a speed, in this case is frequency, is two at plus b. So two multiplied by a multiplied by time plus b. So this tells us 
the frequency ft is really a function of time. Yeah, it is true because you have chirp signal. Uh, the when the time goes by, the frequency changes. It can goes down, goes up. Uh, but basically it's a function of time. So the start frequency is when time is equal to zero. So when t is to equal to zero, then we get start frequency, f1. The end of frequency is when t is equal to duration. This time is end of duration. So it really depends if you have long, if you, uh, if you want two seconds, the, uh, acceleration is different speed, then you end up a different frequency as you uh, want to end up a three second, two second, three second, four second, I'm not different. Okay, so we can use this to actually further derive the relationship. So when t equal to zero, so we say t equal to zero, so basically two a t is zero, two multiplied by a multiplied by zero is zero. So then f t, which is a frequency, is equal to b. So basically, that tells us when t equal to zero, all right, that's f1. Start frequency is time equal to zero, and that's basically just equal to b. So the coefficient of b, that's basically tells us the um, previous code we have here. Anything, you know, in front of this t to the power of one, which is the first order of t, is the start frequency, 200. 1,700, okay. So the end frequency is slightly complicated because uh, it's basically is when t equal to duration, all right? So here we say when t equal to duration, we just put substitute, let t equal to duration, we will have the second formula, f2. When t equal to duration is end of frequency, hence f2 equals to two multiplied by a multiplied by duration, plus b, but we know b is always equal to f1, so we can use f1 here. So by doing this uh, mathematical uh, derivation, we'll be able to then rearrange equation to establish the uh, coefficients b and a. So b is f1, a is then rearrange the second equation, f2 minus f1 divided by 2, uh, times duration. So, in that case, what good thing is we now have a and b in relation with f1, f2. So I can write the following code. So this following code is very easy to convert into a function because you can see now here. So this bit of code here until your line eleven, that's all easy. Yeah, basically that being simply mean uh, you as same kind of uh, any sine wave, we want sampling frequency, fs, 8k, uh, we have amplitude, one, I mean, better I put 0.8, now start with, uh, sampling period, duration, and time. Again, time from zero until duration. But now instead of, when we're doing sine wave, we define f equal to frequency, now we're doing two frequencies. I said f1, uh, start frequency and f2 and the frequency. So I'm going to do uh, 2k maybe, okay. So so now, well, because this uh, mathematical uh, derivation, we now know coefficient b is f1, coefficient a is f2 minus f1 divided by two times duration. So that's good. So we're now converting, so from, up to line 13, that's all you and the user would know. Yeah, and the user say, I want this, 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 blah, blah. Then here is the internal algorithm, okay? So we say the algorithm we established uh, coefficient B and A, and then we generate a theta based on the generic uh, function, two pi BT plus AT, basically AT squared plus BT. We no longer need to say because C is eliminated after, uh, derivation. You can actually put any number, it doesn't affect, for example, 100 as an example. It doesn't affect the sum at all. You can do experiment, try put any number here, but because it will become initial phase shift, there's no significance in the frequency domain. You can't hear it. 
Then we produce the chirp signal and we can some chip. Now what are we going to do is for a while, I'm, I don't need to audio write. I'm going to do spectrum grams slightly later, so I comment that. <clears throat> I'm going to test my algorithm by just altering these two. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to play this uh, code. Going up, Olivia said, sorry, why don't we have C anymore? Because we can have C, but C can be any number, all right? So if I'm now adding 200 uh, uh, degree here in C or radians, we just have this sound that we can play again. It will be exactly the same. It doesn't matter what C number is. So the C put there was really trying to confuse people. I mean, sure, you know, okay. So it doesn't matter what number you put here, even minus 800, it will create exactly the same, same sound. Okay, so uh, what we're going to test, so if, if C doesn't affect, we just delete it, simplify the code. So then we can say, I created this, let's try uh, changing different values, see if it works. That's going downwards, F1, 2000, F2, 200. Or maybe slightly, slightly uh, lower, but longer running that uh, from 800 to 200. So it works basically. It works, and it, meanwhile, in the in the screen, I, I actually plot uh, print out uh, the coefficient a because coefficient a really is not very much related to start of end frequency. It's kind of a more of uh, the formula here. So yeah, we can actually altering simply altering. So this code give you a f uh, ability to just input. Um, start and frequency, certainly you can change the duration to one second or whatever. Okay, so the second part of this, so the chirp signal is very interesting. So the second part of this is we all know from the first demo, FFT doesn't uh, uh, give you much more information, uh, useful information, so we need to use spectrum gram, which is uh, another name of uh, short time, which basically a basic implementation of short time Fourier transform in the graphic way. So we have created a sound in chirp one. So I'm going to use chirp one as the first parameter. You know, um, people ask why is, you know, this window and overlap, I explain a bit more. So I just use that uh, window size. This is quite a big overlap <laughs> and slightly another window size. Uh, this is sampling frequency. Now we use um, the actual variable instead of number. Okay, let's try run this one. Okay, now we have this uh, diagram to representing the sound that we just hear, all right? So this is the diagram. Uh, what we can see here is the time uh, is from zero going up. Time is on y axis, so the time going uh, uh, this way. So when the time goes by, the frequency is going down. Yeah, going down. So basically like this 800 to 200 hertz. So if I'm going to change this to uh, 2000, hopefully it should give uh, uh, the, the, the diagram of uh, frequency higher from, you see you can hear 2000 to 2k, yeah, the center of this uh, is at this point. So the the color representing the energy of the frequency. So basically the code like a blue color representing the low energy of the frequency and the brightness, uh, yeah, like the brightness color, more bright, uh, it's golden yellowish is representing the hot frequency uh, energy. The energy is high on that frequency. Um, what I'm trying to do here is the you can improve this by um, changing. Okay, so let's put this all in one window so we can actually look at improvement of the plotting. So what if I'm changing this uh, window size? So for example, I can change this to 512. So that basically means I want more 
accurate frequency estimation because we give it more number. Remember, we did a FFT uh, lectures. So, and do overlap of half of the window size, 512, 256 is half, and number of FFT is 512. Another parameter which I, because spectrum RAM takes loads of different parameters, is this Y axis. Sometimes I do want uh, that the, I prefer, it depends on what, what, you know, your, your own preference. I prefer this axis steers time. Time goes by frequency on this line. So if I put Y axis, that means the frequency energy we're going to put into Y axis. So we're going to uh, change the coordination. So let's do this way. Okay, so you now can see a quite different diagram. Because you see the uh, spectrum is much more clear. The background is much bluer than before. The previous diagram has a bit of yellowish on the background. That's basically a frequency leakage, which, is, uh, which means the frequency estimation of the signal has some error. I mean, I have said this in previous lecture, BFT is not 100% accurate estimation is best guess yeah depending on the, the the data you give them so this data now showing i mean also time here so we got the frequency from uh, 2k downwards the sacrifice of this approach is maybe i create another what i want to show is the frequency going upwards okay so let's do this way frequency going upwards so the downside of this method is you get much clear frequency, you get much clear frequency uh, representation in color. However, the downside of this is you have a big chunk of time blocks. You can time blocks, you can see. Because you can only, this, there's a philosophical uh, question here. To be able to estimate a frequency more accurate, you want to observe more time. Otherwise, you, how can you see the pattern? You can't just see a, a, a pattern just for one sample. You have to observe uh, loads of samples. So you say, hey, this sample appear this pattern. That pattern basically is frequency. So you can't really get both uh, a frequency accuracy and the time accuracy, we'll call time resolution. There's a lot of time resolution. Some people refer to this as a sort of a, a uncertainty theory of DSP. People refer to the uncertainty theory of quantum physics. Yeah, so this is uncertainty. So you cannot be both certain of frequency accuracy and time accuracy. That basically you, you have to buffer 512. So the time has to be counted in a big blocks. So maybe this is, I don't know, maybe 20 millisecond. And previous diagram, maybe you can estimate about every five millisecond or something like that. The another interesting stuff we can do is to uh, actually using chirp signal to uh, um, estimate a uh, aliasing problem. So you can see this. Frequency only display from zero to four K. Yeah, why it is four K? Because the sampling frequency in my case, in this code, is eight K. So you cannot really have any frequency um, generate digitally greater than half sampling se uh, frequency. That's sampling theory. But if I want to do that, what would happen is you will have aliasing, uh, and you can actually hear it. So people think, uh, uh, or you know, DSP sampling aliasing is all kind of a theoretical, you know, uh, the domain is not. But actually, it is very important. It's actually practically, as audio in engineer, you will encounter it, and you need to avoid it. Okay, so let's try that. So if, for example, the maximum frequency we can generate in theory is 4K, because that's a half sampling frequency. Yeah, up to this point. How about I'm going to generate a chirp on tier? 6k what happened what would happen okay let's going to try this all right so we actually i mean i'm also i need to play the sound of that maybe it sounds interesting as well so you actually can hear the sound coming downwards after you hit the digital ceiling wall of the frequency 4k 
So the aliasing is anything beyond the system capacity in terms of sampling frequency, half sampling, we're folding back, actually, we are makes audible, makes audible. All right, so we can create uh, something more radical. For example, if we want to create up to the whole sampling frequency, 8K, much higher, so you basically see the sound coming back. All right, so it's eight, you can actually hear the editing frequency now. So, um, what is this significant? Firstly, it shows the uh, YouTube signal can be used as very good test signal. Secondly, is uh, uh, you need to be very careful, give a bit of a frequency headroom. That's why human ear can hear 20K, but CD sampling rate is 22, uh, 44K, which is give uh, 22K as uh, some headroom, all right? So you got some bit of headroom because when you're dealing with any audio processing, you probably will have some problem of the aliasing in digital world. Okay, so in this case, for example here, let's give you a very interesting example here. So I got this chirp signal, all right? So I can run that. This create a chirp signal from 20 to 4K. 4K is the maximum, uh, maximum uh, digital frequency we can, not digital frequency, the, the frequency in digital domain we can actually produce in this capacity. However, it will have problem if adding any audio effects. For example, I have this piece of code here, which is a clip, signal clipping. Okay, so I copy paste this code from the previous clipping uh, signal. So let's copy paste this. If I'm going to create a chirp signal with clipping, what would happen? Okay, so we after we create a chirp signal at line 15 here, then we can add a bit of a, a bit of a code to do a clipping. Okay, so uh, x1 equal to chirp1, y equal to x. So we threshold 0 0.5, and then we make this 0 0.9 high amplitude so we can clip it. And then I don't need this sound. I have this uh, sound here, so we can try to sound the signal before and after. So before clipping is X, we pause two seconds after clipping. Okay. Then I'm going to plot the sound before clipping, which is X. Okay, so now we're going to do a clipping sound, yeah? So first of all, let's try the code. So the second sound, you hear some strange background noise. And that noise is because we clip sound, we create harmonics. The harmonic will be doubled to the fundamental frequency. Where here, fundamental frequency is ramping up, up to the half sampling frequency. So if we're looking at, if we're going to look at the spectrum gram of clipped sound, you can look like this. So you can see the harmonic, the second harmonic is very strong. It's basically already, because it's double the uh, original sound, so up to about uh, uh, maybe 2K already start up to about 0 0.4 second, when the um, fundamental sound is already going to be kind of a, uh, a list. So that's why you hear some background noises. So this is showing you need to be careful when you de deal with digital sound audio effects or whatever, because when you have uh, a digital effects, you might create some frequency beyond the original sound. So it might, if that sound is beyond the half sampling frequency, it might folding back to the audio domain and create the effect you don't want. Maybe you want that effect, that's a different story. Because I was, I remembered a few years ago, I, I met a guy from uh, a wave plugging. I hope, I, I suppose this is very famous plugging company for professional audio. They have uh, a development team in Israel, yeah? So they told me uh, all their plugging, all their plugging has to do, has to work on oversampling domain. So you come in audio 8K, for example, it's not going to be 8K because it's probably 44K. It will oversample to 190K or very high sampling frequency that give you big headroom. So you do some process 
and as well as filtering, then come back, then you get to eliminate this aliasing problem. Otherwise, you will encounter some of this aliasing problem. Okay, so this piece of code, I, I don't know if I uploaded the whole uh, clipping code, but you can actually try yourself. Uh, the refined code is online. So if you're adding the clipping code, you probably can reproduce this aliasing effects as well. All right, so I think that's probably all of today's uh, lesson. Uh, there is, yeah, so that's basically today's lesson about uh, uh, FFT short term fully transform. I hope you find it useful and informative.